and a couple of other things, but we have learned that the bottom line to receiving your healing, your deliverance, your miracle from God is only belief. And so briefly this morning, only belief. There are a number of scriptures that I will share with you on today, and I'll try to take you through them in a way that will be bore, will not be boring and will be somewhat fascinating for you. So you can mark these down and write them down so that uh, when you are in your quiet time with God, you'll have the opportunity to study them. One of them we'd like to look at today as we look at Only Believe. It's the Gospel of Luke, the fourth chapter, verse 38. And he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever. And they besought him to her, I mean they brought him to her. 
And he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her, and immediately she arose and ministered unto them. Amen. Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with diverse diseases brought them unto him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. God bless the reading of his word and the church said amen. amen. Look at somebody again and say only believe. Only believe. Now, now for those of you who are believers and who are seeking to be healed, to be delivered, and to be set free by the Father. You've got to understand that because you are busy about your Father's business and trying to do the things that the Master have called you to do, it is the job of the enemy to interrupt you to the point of where you become discouraged, you become disheartened, and you make up your own mind and put it in your spirit. I can't do this. I can't do that. I'll never receive this. I'll never have that. But somebody help me say that devil is a liar. Devil is a liar. Simon has had a turnaround in his life. You've read about Simon, Simon Peter. Simon was somewhat of a businessman, but more than that, he was a gangbanger and he was one of those who had a secret life. We know a little bit about Simon because even when Jesus was taken away in the Garden of Gethsemane, the other Simon came out. And so when Jesus visits his home, after Simon has received him as Lord and Savior, has taken a turn in his life and has now become the greatest follower of Christ. He goes to his home and what do you think happens? The lady of the house. The one that must minister to the Son of God, the Messiah. All of a sudden, she is taken sick with a, the Bible said, no little fever, but a great fever. And this great fever was enough to have taken her out of here. And when they got to the house, she's on her bed of affliction. Any of you have ever received company, you know that when company's coming, you want to get the house in order. Not only do you want to get it in order, you want to be there. To make sure everything goes well. And for those of you who know your husband. And it may be a little like me. You make sure everything is right before you leave. Because no telling who going to be coming by the house to see him. So you want to make sure that all is well. So this woman was totally upset with herself. That here is this great opportunity. And she's laying in the bed. I cannot minister to her son's very special guest. But when Jesus saw her condition. He went by all of the others, laid his hands on her, and immediately she got up on her feet. And she got up on her feet, word went out to everybody. She didn't keep this a secret, did not hold it within herself, but she told everybody, the healer, the deliverer, this mind that my son is following, oh child, you need to come by my house. In my early days of ministry before my mother learned better, so Scott and I would hate to go home because when we got to our house, there would be a line of cars in the front yard. People would be pulling up the Mansfield Road and she said, baby, y'all come go with grandmama. Not knowing any better, we'd get in the car and go with her. By the time the day was over, we'd been to five hospitals, two or three nursing homes, and everybody that was sick in the community. And we were trying to explain, mama, we did not come to work. We came to rest. We came to see you. Yeah, baby, I know, but cousin so-and-so been sick for a long time, and Uncle this been having that, and so-and-so. But everywhere we went, the Lord used us, and she would be calling back. That's before Tawana taught her the text. Amen. Yeah. That, that this one got healed, that one got delivered. The Lord made a way. Because when you have good news, you want to share it with somebody else. Yeah. And if you ever been healed by God, Come on, let me see your hand. Just wave your hand. If you don't want to say it, just wave your hand. Just, just look at somebody and say, I have been healed. Have been now, let me give you a key here. If you want to be healed again, you better say something. Amen. Let me try this out. If you want to be healed again, you better tell somebody. Right. And the more you tell others, the more the master will do for you. See, part of your healing is tied up in your testimony. Yeah. Oh, I'm not in the right house here. See, man, when you share your testimony, God said, let me do it again because they appreciated it so much. 
You don't have time to give your whole testimony, but just tell two people, he healed me. Just tell somebody else, he healed me. Some of y'all can say it was diabetes. Others can say I'm a cancer survivor. Others say there's blood pressure. Others, heart disease and a number of other things. But whatever it was, let's give God some praise right now. The world is waiting on our testimony. I, I, I realize that people get tired of me saying how God healed my baby boy. Oh, but when I see him standing tall, six feet one, a hundred and uh, I guess maybe 145 pounds or whatever, got his health, got his strength, the hole is no longer in his heart. The physician said he would be a slow learner because he was born in stress as a preemie and the oxygen didn't get to his brain in time and he had all kind of other physical ailments and they said he's going to be a different child and when I look at him and see what God has done, oh I can't help but tell somebody. You understand what I'm saying? And when the man of God said yes, Brother Gatlin God will heal your child but he wants you to never leave Bishop Winbush, never leave Louisiana because your inheritance and your healing is tied up here. I didn't want to hear that, but because I wanted my child healed, I obeyed God and God did the healing. Can somebody shout hallelujah? A few years later, about 14, 15, he's an athlete at Northside High School doing well. I didn't hear him, but his mother heard him. Mom, help me. Just a whisper. She said, Paul's in trouble. I said, what you talking about? I didn't hear him. She did. She ran to check on her child. And this healthy little child that's an athlete just beginning to develop, laying out, I can't breathe. My chest hurt. I didn't have time to wait for our ambulance. You understand what I'm saying? Because I'm thinking, I got to get there, and I got to get there in a hurry. When we got to the emergency room, the doctors bring us a strange report. It appears that your 14-year-old is having a heart attack. Y'all know the supervisor. Oh, oh, yeah, that devil is a liar. She instantly went into her praise line in the emergency room, y'all. Amen. Amen. No shame in a game. Didn't care who saw. Didn't care who heard. I joined right on. Oh, said Jesus. Put him in ICU. Call the cardio, uh, 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 cardiologist and all of those folks. But a couple of days later, they said, we don't know what happened. We cannot find all of those enzymes and other things that were going to his heart. We, we can't understand it. Let him go home. Yes. I said, can he play football, Mr. Gallon? I don't know what happened. He can do anything he want to do. But you know what we told God? God, you promised us. You don't have to do anything. You healed him when he was a child. And we refused to let the devil bring it back again. Lift your hand and say, Lord, I stand on your promise. Anybody want to give God some praise for your healing? I know you may not have it yet. Your head may be still hurt. Your blood pressure may be still high. But can you praise him in advance for his promise? Any y'all got a relative that's sick like Peter had? And if you got a loved one that's not at their best like Peter had, you have someone on their bed of affliction, let me tell you what to do. You do what Peter did for his mother. You bring Jesus, the Jesus in you. You bring that Jesus to their bedside. Lay your anointed hands on them and watch God work the miracle. Oh, I'm going to show you where you can do that in the book of James in a little while. But right now, turn with me to 2 Chronicles 20 and 20. 2 Chronicles 20 and 20. Here we have Jehoshaphat. He is in serious trouble in the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they go forth, Jehoshaphat says a strange word to all of his church people, the nation that he serves. I know we are surrounded by the enemy. I know there is trouble everywhere. I realize it looks as though our destruction is imminent. Yes. 
I know it feels like no matter what anybody or anybody says or anybody does, we are already doomed. But Jehoshaphat stands there and delivers a word to the people. Hear me, O Judah. And ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Look at your neighbor and say, believe in the Lord your God. Ah, uh, anybody want to help me right there? He said, believe in the Lord your God. See, a whole lot of us go to church, but do we believe? Yeah. We know what the word says, but do we believe it? Yeah. We know what the preacher said, but do we believe it? You heard my testimony of how God worked a miracle in Paul Gatlin's life, and, and now he stands as a man of God, but do you believe it for yourself? In case you don't believe, just, just wake your hand real low and say, Lord, help my unbelief. Amen. Don't put that one up. Just say, Lord, help my unbelief. But he said, believe in the Lord your God, and then so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, and so shall ye prosper. A number of you have been prayed on, you've been pushed on, you've been spent on, you've been sprinkled on, you've been oiled up and oiled down. They prayed for your coat, your eyeglasses. You had some beautiful hats messed up. All us preachers throwing all in water, sprinkling everything on you. You have raised your hand in front of the television. You have touched the television screen. You have heard the preachers that don't touch that dial. <laughs> when you went to change the station, you have done enough things that your faith ought to be like an overflowing vessel. You have done so many things to the glory of God until you should be at the sermon. David said, my cup running. Somebody help me shout over. You've stood in prayer lines. You've stood in faith lines. You have given seed offering. You have given your rent money, your house note money. You have done numerous things proving your faith to God when all you had to do was believe in the Lord, your God. Contrary to what everybody tells you, no. He does not want your house no. Want you to give your house no to the people you want. Therefore, he said, oh, no man. Except, oh, y'all mad with me again. Except to love it. He said, I will not put more on you than you can bear. Oh, Lord, I can't really afford to give this. Then put it in your pocket. No, I'm going to give it all. That's all. No, you don't know who you are always giving to. But it's not the man. It's the power behind the man that you are supposed to trust. Not the individual, but the God that he serves. Am I in the right house here? And so therefore you say, I should have gave that preacher my money. Nothing happened. Well, it's going to happen because you had your trust in the preacher and not in the man that called the preacher. Oh, come on, look at somebody and say, it's not in the gift, but it's in he who gave the gift. The master gave us the power and the anointing and the strength to get all that we have. Did you not read where it is the Lord that giveth us power to receive wealth? It's the Lord that anoints individuals even to bring your healing. And therefore, when God has a healing for you, he'll find you at FedEx. He'll find you at the sheriff department. He'll find you at Lafayette General. He will find you in your classroom. He will find you wherever you are when you believe and say, receive your healing. Come on, everybody, lift your hands up. I feel the power of God in here ready to heal somebody now. Come on and say, Lord, I receive my healing. And I give God some praise right there. Come on, come on, oh, don't give it brother down. I said, give God the praise right there. Give the master the praise right there. Now, I used to be a sick individual. Yes, I was. I was about 13, 14. I was into my H rap brown days. Power to the people. Black power. I was all into that. And my folks were praying for me. The Honorable Elijah Mohammed. I was going to be a Muslim and everything. Kill the police. No, that was ice. Shoot everybody. You know, anger. I wasn't there with Brother Tony, but Brother Tony was in the riots. 
They are in Watts. Hello, somebody. But I was watching it on TV. Then burn that city down. Amen. Yes, I was there in anger and heart and spirit. And now, if I'm not careful, Ferguson will make me go back again. Yes. What happened in New Iberia will make me go back to that, that same individual that I used to be. What happened? You know, and, 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 and I'm trying hard to maintain my integrity as a believer that God made all of us. And whether we like it or not, we're going to have to live together. Yeah. yeah. And then in my hometown the other day, they killed that young officer yes. for nothing. I said, you see, we got people who have lost it on both sides yes. of the color line. It's not about black and white. It's about sin. Yes. And when sin is in your heart, your color has little to do with it. It'll make everybody mess up. And so I have to believe then that when God gives us his word, when God gives us a purpose, when God says that it shall be, I have to stand on what God says rather than what I see. Turn to Psalm 27 and 13. The psalmist is going through. Trouble is everywhere. He's got people who are lying on him. They are bearing false witnesses against him. They have hung his name out to dry. No one appreciates him or loves him or cares for him. He has no clue as to who he can trust and who he cannot trust. And he is totally at odds with himself. And in Psalm 27, in the 13th verse, David said, I have faith. Kirk Hall says it another way. All most gave up. Felt like I just couldn't take life anymore. Any of y'all remember that? This is what David is saying. I had faith unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In other words, David said he understood that what he was going through right now was only temporary. Yes. All right. Oh, it didn't come out right now. Hallelujah. What I'm feeling right now is only, somebody help me shout, temporary. Yes. See, I cannot see it, but the word of God said, God's got a blessing with my name on it. Yes. I want all the folks that need some money to just shout, it's temporary. Yes. temporary. Those of you that's got some bills that are new, shout again, temporary. Those of you that's got the enemies all around you, they can't stand you. Look like your haters are winning. Help me shout temporary. But David said, I believe that if unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In other words, my brothers and sisters, no matter what I'm going through now, greater is coming. No matter how broke I am now, sage, the camels are coming. No matter what my bank account look like, what my doctor report says, what the EKG said, the MRI, whatever it is, greater is coming. Anybody want to believe God? Anybody want to trust God? I know they said they can't help you, but baby, my help is not in you. My help is in the Lord, my God. Somebody help me shout again. Greater is coming. Now, see, the reason we preachers make you say something is because there is a word of God that says you shall have whatever you say. Look at the neighbor behind, beside you and say, you better open your mouth and say something. It ain't my fault, Brother Atkins, if you go home the same way you came. Hey, it ain't my fault, Brother Atkins, if you go home all depressed, upset, mad, and looking cute but ugly on the inside. Tell somebody you better say something. Yes. Glory to God. David said, unless I live, believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living sea. There are three uh, uh, examples that theologians believe he's referring to in the land of the living. One of them is he's referring to earth. Meaning that I shall live and not die. Yeah. 
meaning that what God has promised me, I'm not going to die until God gives me what he said I can have. Oh, look at your name and say, die if you want to. I ain't going nowhere. I, I, I've seen a lot of folks on that bed. Uh, my, my mama, you coming with me? No, baby. You go ahead. Hello. I, I'll see you when I get there. Tell somebody else, I'm not going anywhere. Oh, my sweetheart, go. I think I'm going to commit suicide. Not me. I'll get there when I get there. Because God has made me some promises. And I'm not going anywhere until I receive. The other folks who believe that he's talking about the land of the living, his homeland was Jerusalem. And Jerusalem was in trouble. They were in danger. They did not have all that God said they were supposed to have. They were not the city on the hill yet. They were not the candle that could not be put out. They were in trouble. But David said, I almost gave up unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, meaning that where I live, my home, my prosperity, my land, my people, my kinfolk, my husband, my wife, my everything. I shall live to see God bring it to pass. Oh, I'm, I sure am preaching this morning. Even if y'all don't say amen. amen. Somebody says, show me right. right. Look at somebody again and say, wherever I live, Want to give God some praise right now? Doctor you say you got six months. That's the doctor saying it. The doctor say you're not gonna make it. That's the doctor, but I got another doctor, yeah. and his name is Jesus. Yeah. Somebody shout glory! Oh, yeah. He's a doctor in the emergency room. Yeah. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I went to court the other day, and I found him to be a liar. In the courtroom, somebody says, show your right. They told me the judge is not going to see it your way. But the judge didn't even call me to testify. He said, where is the preacher? My lawyer said, he's over there. I just waved my hand. Y'all don't believe it, but the old folks said, if I couldn't say a word, I would just. Anybody want to wave your hand? Oh, yeah.